Elon Musk's big boy rocket, the most powerful ever built, is finally ready to fly. We had a successful hot fire, and that was really the last box to check. The vehicle is in good shape. The pad is in good shape. Now SpaceX just needs the green light. But what can guarantee the timeline? Let's find out everything about SpaceX finally launching the Starship to orbit for the first time in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It's a day that could go down in history as the moment humans took their first small step in what will be a giant leap to becoming a multi-planetary species. Elon Musk's $3 billion Starship, a vehicle that could be a game changer for long distance space travel, is now just weeks away from shooting for the stars in what will be a highly anticipated maiden orbital launch. SpaceX originally planned to launch Starship into orbit back in July of 2021, but was forced to delay this following an environmental assessment of the Texas launch site. This was just one of many hiccups the vehicle had been plagued by in attempts to have it lift off for its first orbital flight. Towards the end of 2022, Musk said he believed the Super Heavy rocket could finally launch back in October, although the famously optimistic billionaire has also cautioned that November was highly likely. But that date came and went as well. Not only did Elon Musk, but SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell also said it would be soon and hinted it could be next month. A senior SpaceX director expects the FAA to grant the license for the first orbital launch of the next generation Starship rocket in the very near future. The fact that SpaceX's super heavy rocket, the most powerful ever built, recently completed a successful ground test of all its engines, and that brings the launch even closer. The super heavy is a big deal in the space industry. It's a mega rocket booster in the same class as NASA's SLS or Space Launch System which recently powered the long-awaited Artemis I launch and is on the list of rockets that could eventually take us to Mars. And to top it off, it's built to be reusable, much like the SpaceX smaller and frequently launched Falcon 9. Reusable rockets are a huge deal in terms of cost, and to have something with the power of the SLS and the reusability of the Falcon 9 will be a huge win for the space industry. So far, Super Heavy seems to be on track to do what it's meant to do. This last test streamed live to over 100,000 people. It lasted just a few seconds, but it was enough to satisfy those on the team. The rocket is ready to take its next step. That's not to say, however, that the test went off entirely without a hitch. Of the 33 engines incorporated into the Super Heavy, two experienced malfunctions with one shutting down early and one shutting off just before ignition. As a result, many speculated SpaceX would want to run a second ground test to make sure all engines were firing on all cylinders. But according to SpaceX leadership, 31 engines would be able to get the Super Heavy successfully to orbit, so the company feels no need to run another test on the rocket before launch. So with that, SpaceX seems to be ready to move the booster rocket to its next phase of testing. Next, one important part you're also worrying about is stage zero, right? Well, counter to virtually all other large rockets in history, Starship's first orbital launch pad has no water deluge system, no flame trench, or a thrust diverter to suppress or redirect the incredible amount of energy the rocket engines can produce. Despite that omittance, the flat concrete directly below the pad appeared to survive almost 8 million pounds of thrust and brutal heat with only minor spalling and damage. The concrete adjacent to the orbital launch mount fared less well, but may eventually be replaced with the same high temp Fondag concrete that was added under the mount. The launch mount and its surroundings are in good shape after experiencing about half of Starship's full thrust. It's possible that SpaceX will be ready to launch when they want. In the meantime, SpaceX is already installing a water deluge system that will eventually make the South Texas Starship launch site much more capable of withstanding the stress of a Starship test and launch. Installing that system and building a significantly massive water supply will take months, however, and would likely preclude a March launch attempt, indicating that SpaceX's first orbital Starship launch attempt will happen without it. SpaceX has, however, begun installing a final layer of shielding on Starbase's orbital launch mount. That task will likely need to be completed before the launch attempt. 
Meanwhile, Booster 7's partner for this historic test, Ship 24, had its crane attachment points removed and tiles installed. It's being prepared in the rocket garden as the second stage of the flight. Its roll back to the launch site could come any time over the next coming weeks. After the stacking, SpaceX could perform a few more checkout tests and final steps before the FAA license and hardware readiness would clear the path for the orbital launch. During this test, the rocket will launch itself and its accompanying spacecraft Starship into orbit and return to Earth, hopefully all while preserving both the rocket and craft for their next go off-world. When it's ready to land on Earth, Starship will initially re-enter the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle. It'll then belly flop to the ground in a horizontal position. This type of return uses our planet's atmosphere to slow the vehicle's descent, but it does make it unstable. It's for this reason that Starship will use four steel landing flaps positioned near the front and rear of the vehicle to control the descent, working in a similar way to how a skydiver uses their arms and legs to control the freefall. As Starship approaches the ground, it flips back to vertical and then uses those Raptor engines as retro rockets to guide it down for a safe landing. The test won't be manned, but it'll be a huge step in getting the Starship system, the Super Heavy rocket, and the Starship spacecraft combined and ready for larger missions. Its creation is part of the billionaire's grander version of making us a multi-planetary species, first by starting a human colony on Mars and even getting to the point of building cities. That may seem ambitious, but the Tech Supremo's long-term objective for Starship is for it to possibly carry people to destinations in the greater solar system, including gas giants like Jupiter or one of its possibly habitable moons. The thinking is that if there ever were a global apocalypse on Earth, the human race would have a better chance of several if people lived on different worlds in our solar system. But back to Mars for a minute though. Starship will be capable of carrying up to 100 people to the red planet on a journey. It's 250 times further than the moon and would take about nine months each way. Musk and SpaceX have remained tight-lipped about a lot of the details regarding Starship, including images of what the inside looks like. But the 51-year-old has previously said he's looking to install around 40 cabins in the payload area near the front of the upper stage. You could conceivably have five to six per cabin if you really wanted to crowd people in, the Tesla SpaceX Twitter boss added. But I think mostly we would expect to see two or three people per cabin and nominally about 100 per flight to Mars. Well, that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.